Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who are just joining us, my name is Caroline Vazana. I'm a fashion editor, stylist, and the author and founder of Making It in Manhattan, based in New York City. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a huge q and I had you guys submit questions on my Instagram story, and I just went through, picked out a bunch of questions at random, and I'm just going to dive in and answer them all for you guys. So let's get started. So the first question that I'm going to answer is, did you go to college for something fashion related? I've answered this before, but I want to touch on it again for any new followers out there. Yes, I went to a small liberal arts college in Reading, Pennsylvania called Albright College, and I double majored in fashion design and merchandising. I talk about this a ton in my book and about my path to switching my major to design and merchandising because I originally just went in as a design major. So if you want to learn more about about that story and that journey, you can check out my book, Making It in Manhattan. Next question is, what is your biggest regret career-wise and your biggest success? So my biggest success I know right away is writing my book. I would definitely say that's probably my biggest success or something that I'm most proud of so far in my career. And then something I regret, I mean, I like to say I don't regret anything in my career because Everything that's happened has led me to where I am today. So I'd like to not be hard on myself or think to myself, oh, I wish I could go back and change something. I definitely wish I maybe would have jumped into the social media game sooner because I wasn't necessarily a latecomer, but I wasn't one of the first people in the fashion world on social media. So maybe that is a little bit of a regret, but definitely wouldn't change anything because I always say what is meant to be will be. The next question is, what is your favorite place that you've traveled to? I would definitely right away just say Paris. I love Paris so much. I miss traveling immensely. And as soon as we can travel again, I'm going to Paris. The next question is, where are you from and how did that impact your fashion sense? So for any of my new followers, I am from New York. I grew up in New York and I just love New York so much. And I would definitely say it impacted my fashion sense. Just growing up surrounded by so much art and culture and just walking down a street in New York you pass so many beautifully dressed people so I definitely feel it impacted me to just express myself and to try out different things but with that being said some people are shocked when I tell them that I'm from New York because you know people think that those from New York dress very minimally or in all black and things like that and maybe that's mostly true but for me, not the case. I am definitely very eclectic, very extra when it comes to my fashion sense, but yes, I am from New York. But I would say when I started really experimenting with my style was more so in college, and I went to college, Albright College in Reading, Pennsylvania, and I just feel like that was the time that I started trying to express myself and to find who I was and that came down to playing around with different styles and patterns and textures and that's really when I started finding my personal sense of style. The next question is what are some of your favorite affordable brands that look high-end? So that's a great question because when first starting out and trying to build your wardrobe you do not need to invest in a ton of super high-end designer brands. Even still I love shopping vintage thrift consignment. You can find so so many incredible pieces there that aren't super expensive, especially when I was starting out. I did not have the budget to go out and to buy a head-to-toe Prada look or anything like that. So, you know, brands that I would suggest, ASOS is great. You can find a ton of really cool stuff there that's affordable. H&M is also really, really great. There's also this store called Pixie Market, Mango, River Island. These are all more affordable brands that I would suggest when just starting out and trying to build your wardrobe. And then, of course, thrifting, vintage shopping, consignment shops. Those are great, great ways to find cool things that no one else has but are still fairly affordable. Next, someone asked, when did you realize that working in the fashion industry was the right thing for you? So when I was around 10 years old is when I knew I wanted to work in a creative field. So I originally thought that I wanted to be an artist. I loved drawing and painting and all of that fun stuff. So I thought I wanted to be an artist. And then a few years later, I realized that you could draw clothing. And that's kind of when my love or interest in the fashion industry really started. But the only careers I knew in fashion were to be a designer or to be a buyer. 
didn't know anything about styling or writing or social media or working at a magazine and being an editor. So it wasn't until I went to college and started exploring more and doing internships that I really found my way in the industry and discovered what I wanted to do. But I would say around 10 years old is when I knew I at least wanted to do something in a creative field. So the next question is, how did you find your personal sense of style? So I love that question. I get asked that pretty often. And it was a journey over years. It did not happen overnight. So do not get frustrated with yourself if you haven't found your personal sense of style yet. I probably started experimenting with fashion you know, in 2010, so this is like a 10 year journey guys, 2010, 2011, 2012, I feel like is when I really started experimenting and trying out different things and playing around, oh my gosh, 10 years of a fashion style journey. It really does take time and you have to try different things out because how do you know if something doesn't work for you if you don't try it? Even if you look at something and you're like, oh, I would never wear that, try it once. I always say try something once. If it doesn't work for you, if it doesn't work for your body type, your skin tone, whatever it might be, that's fine. On to the next. But try everything out once. And then that's how you, you know, experiment. Find your style. When I graduated college in 2014 and started working at Teen Vogue, that's also when I started really diving into, like, trying out some, you know, weird, eclectic, colorful pairings, mixing prints, color blocking, colored tights, things like that. That's when I started playing around with all of that, and there definitely were some misses. It doesn't always look good, I'm sure. If you scroll back on my Instagram or see some of my style transformation videos, which I love sharing on TikTok and on Reels and things like that because you guys love them and are very interested to, you know, see the transformation because it's so drastic. It's I compared it to, like, a wannabe Blair Waldorf in the past to, like, what I am now and it's definitely been a journey. So, you know, how did I find it? Experimenting, playing around with different things and then at the end of the day, confidence. You know, people comment on those style transformation videos and they say, you know, I also see a confidence transformation and that is so true. You could see in my body language that in the beginning I was not confident in myself, wasn't confident in my style choices. I just didn't know who I was and and wasn't sure of my decisions, wasn't sure of my choices. I was trying to fit into a mold and to just please others and to fit into the crowd. And I eventually realized, why do that? That's so boring. I wanna be myself. I wanna, you know, wear what I love. I wanna express myself through fashion. And the only way to do that is to try out different crazy eclectic styles and to just see what fits. So, you know, when it comes to gaining confidence, I. I get asked that question often a lot as well. It, it's just changing your mindset to remember you don't need to worry about what other people think. The only person you need to worry about is yourself because at the end of the day, if you love yourself and you are happy with who you are as a person, that's all that matters. Other people's opinions do not matter. Throw them out the window, forget about them, focus on you because you know everything starts with self-love and from within. So next up we have advice for starting a blog. So for starting a blog in 2021, some of my biggest advice would be to one, do your research. There are a lot of blogs out there already, but that does not mean there is not space for your blog. So first off, just do some research. See what's out there already, see what kind of blogs are already being done, and then figure out what you can add to the space or to the conversation that isn't already being said. Also, do your research in terms of your blog name. Make sure the blog name isn't taken already or that someone's already doing something super similar. Try to find something really unique and then go from there. Find a host website. I personally use Squarespace, but I know that there's tons of other ones out there that people love. And then just start writing. You know, at the end of the day, there's never going to be a perfect time, a perfect moment to launch something like an Instagram, a TikTok, a blog. 
You just gotta go for it and in the beginning the content is never perfect. If I could go back and look at some of my own content, which I do from time to time, I often find myself laughing hysterically because it's just so funny to see how far you've come. And the only way you can grow and evolve as a creator, as a writer, as a person in this industry is through trial and error. So just start putting content out there. Just go for it. You know, there's no time like the present to just dive in and chase that dream you have, whether it's a blog or an Instagram or a TikTok or a YouTube, just go for it. So next up we have your book mentioned you were in a sorority. Which one were you in and did it help you with networking? So yes, if you've read my book, I mentioned that in college I was in a sorority. I am a Sigma Kappa and I really enjoyed being in a sorority in college. For me, it was a great way to meet people and to make friends and yes, to network. Um, in terms of you know networking in the fashion industry, there weren't too many people in my sorority necessarily who I ended up networking with that, for example, landed me a job or anything to that extent. There were some people, you know, older alumni who were in the fashion industry or are in the fashion industry, maybe not in my same career path, but in New York as well in general. And during summers when I would do internships, I'd go meet them and take them out for coffee and pick their brains about just, you know, working and living in New York and things like that. Also, sometimes they'd come to our school and they would do talks for fashion. And then if I knew they were a Sigma Kappa, you had an instant connection and things like that. So in terms of networking for my career, Yes and no, it didn't really land me my job or anything like that, but it was nice to know people once I graduated in New York who went to my college who were in my sorority. It's always great to, you know, build your network, whether it's in fashion, not in fashion. I always say networking and meeting people is the best way. You know, you never know who might who you might meet that might know someone that might land you your next job or your next big break in the industry. So I personally enjoyed it a lot. It isn't for everyone, but I went to a small liberal arts college and it was one of the fun things to do on campus and I really enjoyed it. The next question is, what are some of the things that you did in college that prepared you for your career? So in terms of on-campus things, I was involved with the fashion club. My senior year, I was the president and I was also the editor-in-chief of our fashion magazine. Those were two great things that just taught me a lot and I was able to add to my resume and they were great when I was going to apply for jobs. And the next thing that I cannot stress enough is internships. In college, I did several internships on my summer breaks and interning is the biggest thing to help you land a job when you graduate. Intern, intern, intern. I cannot stress enough. Do as many internships as you can while you're still in college because a, it'll help you learn about what you like in the industry, what career paths you like, what you don't like. I think that's so important to know before you graduate and before you start applying for jobs. And then also internships are great experience to list on your resume when you're going to apply for a job. So fashion clubs in college, interning, my two biggest things to help you have a successful college and post-college career. So the next question is one that is really important and I really definitely want to touch on this and it's, did you ever have any insecurities and how did you work to overcome them? So yes, absolutely, I had and still have insecurities for sure, though I am very, very confident in my style choices and what I wear and I feel like that shines through on my Instagram, I definitely have insecurities when it comes to different things. So. I mean, one insecurity that's an insecurity of mine that I don't talk a lot about is my nose. I don't really love my nose. It's not my favorite feature. I mean, I've come to love it over the years, but it's just something that it's different than other people's noses. It's a bold feature of mine, and I've come to love it, A, because it is unique and it's what makes me me, but the other reason is because I inherited it from my family members who I love so much. My grandmother, my dad, people who I just love and adore so much. So, you know, how could I not love a feature that they gave me? It's definitely something I don't feel great about sometimes, uh, especially if I get hate comments on social media from people about it or about the way I look. It can definitely be super, super hard. Also, as you, you know, can probably tell. I definitely like showing one side of my face more than the other. 
there's no particular reason there's nothing wrong with the other side of my face i'm just personally insecure i don't know why my face is not symmetrical as i really don't know whose face is symmetrical we're not robots we're not perfect we're humans but um, I definitely just I favor this side of my face more than I do that side and Yeah, it's just something that I'm insecure about and sometimes if you know I'm at an event pre-covid and someone catches a picture of me on my what I call not my good side I feel very insecure about it Especially if that picture then gets posted online and people see it. It just doesn't make me feel great so you know over time these are insecurities that I've struggled with and that I've had to grow with and to learn to love. It all starts with self-love. Everything starts with self-love and, you know, learning to love your in your imperfections, the things that make you insecure. You know, we're all different for a reason and we're all beautiful in our own ways. You know, I may be scrolling through TikTok one day and start to feel super down on myself because I don't feel like I look like some of these beautiful women out there because there are so many beautiful women out there. But at the end of the day, you have to just remind yourself that you are you and you are you for a reason and that's your superpower that's what will make you successful in this world and in this industry is your differences and what sets you apart from everyone else how boring would this world be if we all looked alike and we're all the same so just to go on a little rant there those are my insecurities and some things that i personally struggle with and deal with i don't talk about them a lot because i don't like talking about them and bringing you guys down or anything you know, I try to make all of my pages very uplifting and happy places that you can go whenever you're feeling down or if you're having a bad day, you can go and see some beautiful, fun, colorful looks. So I'm not going to talk about my insecurities with my nose or with my side of my face, which are just all personal insecurities. But at the end of the day, just know you're not alone. No one's perfect. We're all working on ourselves and we all have things we're working to overcome and to love about ourselves. Okay, so on a lighter note, the next question is really, really fun and I love it. And it's, what would you wear if you were invited to attend your first Met Gala? So the Met Gala is a dream, dream, dream event. If I was invited to attend, I would, you know, pass out. I would just be so happy. Um, I've always dreamed of attending the Met Gala. I think in terms of what I would wear, it would really depend on what the theme is that year because I feel like the theme changes every single year for the Met Gala and that can really determine what you should wear. So I think it would depend on what the theme is. So fingers crossed guys, let's all manifest this. Maybe one day when the world goes back to semi-normal after COVID, who knows, maybe I'll get invited to the Met Gala somehow. Let's speak it into existence. So I just have two questions left. And the first one is how old is too old to be an influencer? So my answer to that is you are never too old. Never, never, never. To dream a new dream, to set a new goal, no matter what it is, being an influencer, being an editor, being a designer, you're never too old. And the beauty of social media is anyone can do it. Grab your phone, open the app, start posting, start sharing your style, your voice, your story. You are never too old to go after it. So that is my advice. And I hope that all of you watching this, no matter what age you are, I hope you know it's never too late to go after that dream you've been dreaming. The last question to wrap up this Q&A is, what is your favorite thing about your career? And that's a great question. There's so much I love about what I get to do. I love that I get to be so creative. I love that I get to work with so many incredibly talented people. Pre-COVID, I loved going to events and meeting people in person and just making new friends constantly. Also pre-COVID, loved traveling and going to new places, seeing new things, attending Fashion Week all over the world. Um, I think now with COVID, you know, it's great being able to make your own schedule, to be able to work anywhere and everywhere, you know, whether I'm at my house or I'm at the beach or, you know, whatever it is, I can work anywhere. I can do my job from anywhere. But, you know, I just still, I love being creative. I love getting to, you know, connect with so many of you and to just share my story and to help you guys 
follow your dreams you know with my book making it in manhattan and my website as well i love being able to hear from you guys and your success stories after reading my book or reading an article on the website i just love helping you guys and it just makes me so happy so being creative helping you guys and meeting you know so many amazing and creative people all the time so that's a wrap on this q a video thanks so much for following along and watching the entire thing i hope you enjoyed it if there's any questions that i missed or if you have any additional questions please comment them below i would love to answer them and chat with you and i will see you guys soon